Hello there everyone, Toy Game Collector here bringing you something I haven't done in a while, but I would like to continue. Today, I'll be reading you a story from the book, 5 Minute Star Wars Stories Strike Back. I have done some of the other stories in this book, you know, feel free to check those out on my channel. Now today we'll be reading Star Wars A New Hope, A Journey Begins. The droid C-3PO and R2-D2 were having a bad day. The evil Empire, led by the Sith Lord Darth Sidious and his second-in-command, Darth Vader, had taken control of the galaxy. Imperial stormtroopers had attacked C-3PO and R2-D2's ship, and the droids had only narrowly escaped Vader's clutches. Now they were stranded on the desert planet of Tatooine, with no hope of rescue. I've got to rest before I fall apart, C-3PO complained. R2-D2 turned down a rocky path. Where do you think you're going? This way is much easier, C-3PO said, pointing in the opposite direction. But R2-D2 just beeped back at his friend. He was on a mission, and he couldn't be stopped. What mission? What are you talking about? C-3PO asked. R2 wouldn't answer, so the golden droid refused to follow him. Soon the little blue and white astromech droid had left C-3PO far behind. But the rocky path was dangerous, and R2-D2 rolled right into a trap. With an electrified blast, a small Jawa scavenger froze R2-D2. The droid couldn't move. Jawas carried R2-D2 to their sand crawler. The little droid was surrounded by salvage junk and other strange droid. R2 was worried. Where were the Jawas taking him? Luckily, R2-D2 wouldn't have to find out alone. The Jawas had captured C-3PO too. The friends stayed close together as the sand crawlers stopped and the Jawas lined up the droids outside. The droids were going to be sold. An older man, Owen Lotters, and his young nephew, Luke Skywalker, examined the droids. The man motioned to C-3PO and a small vet droid. Luke, take these over to the garage. I want them cleaned up before dinner. Luke led C-3PO away. R2-D2 beeped an alarm. He didn't want to be separated from his friend again. Suddenly, the red droid started to spark. It was broken. C-3PO convinced Luke to choose R2-D2 instead. Now don't you forget this, C-3PO said to R2-D2 as the droids followed Luke. Why I should stick my neck out for you is quite beyond my capacity. As he was cleaning the droids, Luke found something jammed in R2-D2's data card input. He tugged and pulled, and suddenly a small hologram appeared. The hologram showed a young woman who looked very important. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope, she said. Luke asked R2-D2 where it got in the message, but R2 wouldn't answer. Luke asked his aunt and uncle about Obi-Wan Kenobi at dinner. The only Kenobi Luke knew was Ben Kenobi, an old man who had lived down in the desert near Luke's family for as long as Luke could remember. But Luke's uncle told him to ignore the message. He needed Luke to help on the farm, not to be thinking about strange messages and planets and people far away. Luke was frustrated. He walked outside and watched the sun set beyond the desert. He had hoped that R2-D2's message would be the start of an exciting adventure that would take him away from the boring life he had always known but it looked like he would be stuck on Tatooine forever. Stupid book. I'm just <clears throat> Luke was destined for adventure after all. R2-D2 had escaped. I told him not to go, C-3PO told Luke, but he's faulty, kept babbling on about his mission. Luke couldn't believe it. If his uncle found out he, he had lost one of the new droids, Luke would be in big trouble. Early the next morning, Luke and C-3PO raced into the desert to find R2-D2. They caught up to the astromech droid, but suddenly, dangerous sand people attacked them. Luke was about to be captured when a loud sound echoed across the rocks. Startled, the sand people looked up to see a strange robed figure quickly approaching. The frightened sand people ran away. R2-D2 whistled in alarm as the figure approached Luke. When the figure lowered its hood, a man's friendly face was revealed. Hello there, the man said. Don't be afraid. Ben? Ben Kenobi? Luke asked. The old man nodded and revealed that he was also known as Obi-Wan Kenobi. R2-D2 beeped. 
His mission was almost complete. Obi-Wan led Luke and the droids to his small hut. He told Luke he used to be a Jedi Knight and had fought beside Luke's father during the Clone Wars. The Jedi had all disappeared long before. They had once fought for peace and justice in the galaxy using a mysterious energy field called the Force. Luke didn't know much about the Jedi Knights, or his father for that matter, though. He was a good friend, Obi-Wan said, which reminds me, I have something here for you. Obi-Wan gave Luke his father's lightsaber. The blade ignited with a whoosh. Luke smiled. Lightsaber felt right in his hand, as if he was meant to have it. Obi-Wan turned to R2-D2. It was time to, time to find out what the young woman's message was. With a simple push of a button, the hologram reappeared. This time, R2-D2 played the full message. The young woman, Princess Leia, was part of a rebellion that was fighting against the evil Empire. R2-D2 and C-3PO had a bound board Leia's ship before it was captured by Darth Vader. Princess Leia had important information in R2-D2's memory banks before the two droids escaped. She needed Obi-Wan to take R2-D2 to safety to her home, safely to her home planet of Alderaan to help the rebellion. <clears throat> Obi-Wan asked Luke to go along with him on this new mission and become a Jedi like his father before him. Luke agreed to help Obi-Wan and R2-D2. He didn't know what was going to happen next, but he knew that his life was about to change forever. And well, that about wraps up this story time, everyone. Thank you for watching. Join me again next time where I'll read the Star Wars story trapped in the Death Star. Till then, this is Toying Game Collector signing off.